Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to deal with the sample return mission that was sent to Mars but really can't return samples now, except somebody suggested maybe landing it on Phobos or Deimos and returning a sample from there, but I'm not too sure we can do that, we'll have to see. But uh, there, there is a little bit of a problem on that because I did previously try to turn to that mission and start recording and doing all the things and the mission exploded. Now that happened after I tried to clean some debris in the tracking station. Um, don't know what the connection between the two might be. Maybe there's no connection. But yeah, I was cleaning some debris that I thought would either deorbit or otherwise, you know, uh, we could ignore uh, because it was like more than 10 years old. Uh, but yeah, um, so we'll have to see about that. I also queued up some additional missions. We already built a Moonport resupply mission, so we'll be launching that to resupply the Kerbals around the moon. And we've got a backup of that. And then three Outer Planets communication satellites that we will launch at this Earth to Jupiter transfer window in the hope of putting some communication satellites in orbit around uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Maybe Neptune, we'll see. But uh, they've got the Voyager antennae, which are the longest range ones that we've got, and lots of RTGs and supplementary antennae too, so that uh, we can make a proper communication network. So we'll have to see about that. Yep, uh, it's going to be interesting. But without further ado, let's try and turn to... So I restored the save, obviously, and we will try to turn to the Mars Sample Return Alpha mission again and hopefully it won't explode this time. Okay, here we are, and it's going to have a, it has a dummy maneuver there to help us get into whatever orientation we want around Mars. And interestingly, that maneuver is before the Mars encounter. I thought it would be within the Mars encounter, so that's a little bit different from what I was expecting as well. And also the Mars periapsis is quite high for considering what I normally do with my missions. I normally don't have it at 110,000 kilometers. All right, well, let's take a look. I suspect there's been some issue here. Okay. Oh. There was the weird KOS beep and then I heard an explosion. I don't understand. Yeah, okay. Um, let's F3. Surveyor core exploded due to overheating. Biological sample capsule exploded due to... Everything exploded due to overheating. And I, you know, I went out. I restored the save. I came back in. Another possibility is I could just restart my computer. I guess it'd be an interesting experiment. What happens... Uh, we'll, we'll try and do everything else the same. Okay, oh well. <sighs> well, I, uh, I don't think we're going to be able to do this mission. I just hope other things don't explode on me. Yep, uh, well, this mission was messed up in the first place anyway, I suppose. Alright, here we are with Moonport Resupply. And throttle's up, SAS is on. And at least it didn't explode on the launch pad. Here we go, ignition! And launch! Okay, we're well past the speed of sound, approaching maximum dynamic pressure. Okay, booster separation. Off they go. Alright, separation, separation, and ignition. Alright, very good, and fairing set. Well, wait. Fairing set. There we go. Still need to remove these Reflectron KR7s from this. It very much does not need them. And shut down. Alright, 281 by 247. 
and the relative inclination went higher than I wanted but let's get set up to uh, transfer to the moon now okay well we've done this all before let's make it quick RCS oh we really shouldn't have the Ford RCS firing but anyway uh, check that the engine is ready it is and ignition All right, we are on our way. Okay, getting ready to shut down. Or that can happen. Okay, well, that had less fuel than I thought it would have. Fair enough. I mean, that always seems to happen with this mission. Separation. And ignition. It's better off to finish it with this anyway. Okay, and then we're going to have to do a mid-course adjustment to bring it in and get a good orientation with respect to the station. At this point, Moonport 1 has about 110 days of supplies. Spaceport 2 doesn't have any problems. So after this delivery, we are hoping that we can do the Ganymede lander adjustments. I think those are just mid-course adjustments. Jovian 1 should be actually approaching. That's an SOI change. All right, mid-course adjustment underway. Well, we have no connection right now. That's a bit of a, oh, but there we have a reacquired. Good, good. We've got a lot of stuff around the moon. We shouldn't have no connection. Uh, I think I might have brought it in too much. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to get another closest approach distance as low as I did just now. Nope. Um, so I'm actually going to boost it back out again. Because I do want to rendezvous quickly. We don't really need to deliver much fuel to the station at this point, so... Not a big deal to use in a little bit of extra fuel here. Okay, looks like... Wanted to give us 75 kilometers or so. Okay, well that's better. Yep, that'll get us our rendezvous. Uh, Time to close the approach distance is an hour and 56 minutes, though. Well, just to fit everything in, it looks like we might need to use the Apollo docking system to dock here. I suppose, uh, well, no, this still has some supplies on it. Um, not to mention some fuel. Though, I guess those could be moved in. But for now, we'll just dock the other one... Uh, maybe on the end here actually would be most convenient since we're not uh, sending a new crew vessel here yet. All right. Also, uh, bright side, it didn't explode, so that's good. Okay, we have connection. Uh, total amount of supplies now at 237 days for Moonport 1 with four crew on board. And, well, we'll just leave it here. It seems to be in a good position. Let's turn to our other missions and, once again, hope that they don't explode. Let's take care of this Ganymede lander and Jovian 1. All right, well, here we are with our first Ganymede lander attempt, and I'm happy to see, and I was frightened for a bit because it took a while for it to load, happy to see that it is still intact and didn't explode. Yeah, um, it took a while. It also made the funny um, KOS sound coming to it. I don't know why. It looks like our planned correction is only 17.7 meters per second. It's probably just a... Uh, 
quick little inclination correction to make sure that we're approaching Ganymede properly. So, well, there's Ganymede, yeah. Uh, focus view. And indeed, it is just to take our orbit from that inclination to a flatter, more uh, Ganymede-friendly trajectory. All right, so let's do that. Power seems all right. Plutonium doing well. It's uh, 259 days into its trip. It's still got a long ways to go. It looks like it's just using a reaction wheel to turn it. Yeah, these fuels are locked. Okay, well, um, let me activate these manually because I'm afraid of staging. But that'll take uh, quite a while, uh, 30 minutes. 30 minute delay. Interesting that the engine activations aren't indicating, uh, uh, don't uh, have any sound to them. Usually they do. Okay, well. You're not gonna follow the. Hmm. They should have en had engine gimbling. I wonder why it didn't follow the maneuver node. These are supposed to be able to gimbal and everything. Shouldn't have just been the reaction wheel on top. Okay, that should be good enough. You can just point prograde now. And yeah, that's a pretty good match for what we had planned. Two degree difference. Well, I guess that can be dealt with. Anyway, that's something we can figure out when we get there. Let's just add the SOI change alarm. And that's in 554 days, so just a year and a half. I say just, but uh, probably a lot of activities before we get to that again. Would have been nice to just get through one of these missions, all you know, from launch to landing, as it were. But, well, we do want to get as much done as possible in the time that we have, so can't just be time warping through things. Okay, a Jovian 1 on Nico 411, well, I mean, it used to be on a Nico 411B, but I wanted to check whether we have some transfer, oh, this is not a good place to check for those transfer windows. Okay, uh, let's go back to the Space Center. Well, something interesting is happening with this Jovian 1. Um, it's, it seems to have a Jupiter encounter here. But very clearly, we intended for this to go to Saturn. And the SOI change in 68 days probably is a Saturn SOI change. But do we have to do some sort of correction to get it there? Or is it just favoring the Jupiter interaction over the Saturn one because it's trying to confuse me? Well, only thing to do is to go over there and find out. What's the signal to lay out here like, though? Okay, so uh, RTGs are intact. Indeed, still operating just fine. And probe looks good. Probe look, looks good. It's got a delay of an hour and ten minutes. And what is really going on here? It thinks I want to rendezvous with Jupiter, which I don't. Why didn't I have Saturn as a target in the first place? Um, are we really going to be able to rendezvous with Saturn? Well, uh, let's see. The plan was in 68 days we would be entering Saturn SOI, so let's find out. We have uh, completed integrated avionics, it looks like. Did I not queue some rockets to be built? Oh, we built everything. I guess I could build some more outer planet communication arrays, but... I'm just curious about this. Oh, wait! Saturn encounter confirmed. Finally. Alright. And we need to adjust our periapsis and everything. What we needed was a flyby. 
And the flyby has a required altitude, 20,000 kilometers. We definitely aren't going to be doing anything fancy with this one, except for a flyby, so let's just get as close as possible. I mean, with this trajectory, it's not going to encounter another moon or something, like our Titan shot, which is coming in later. So now we've got two other Titan shots, and those will... Uh, We'll just be able to focus on Titan if necessary. Ooh, the choppiness out here is, is real. I'm just going real in at this point in order to get closer to Saturn. Hopefully that makes sense. We don't have any one kill Newton thruster on here. We should do some science. Um, it'll take about an hour and however many minutes. 20 minutes, I think. We'll save the goo for when we get close to Saturn. At least I hope 20,000 kilometers is close enough. If we could make orbit around Saturn, that'd be even better, but I can't really tell right now because we don't get a Delta V reading on the RCS. So, can't really tell whether we're going to have orbit. This doesn't really have any relay antennae or anything that could be used to help communicate back to Earth for other missions. Well, it's going to take 103 days to get to Saturn periapsis. So that's really when we complete this contract. We'll have some Jupiter missions launched before then. And those missions might not be just to Jupiter. They might be using Jupiter to slingshot to Saturn and Uranus, as we do. And this is the transfer window before the Voyager window, I believe. So we're trying to get these things to their locations before all the Voyager missions head out, which are not going to be just flyby missions. They're going to be somewhat more substantial, I feel. Maybe some other lander missions. Depends on how we feel about the Ganymede lander. I think it's doing all right. So there's no particular reason not to send some other missions like those in order to orbit the various moons of Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus. Looks like a 20,000 kilometer approach is going to take us through Saturn's rings. I trust those are not collidable. Pretty sure they're not. That's 20. And we'll give ourselves some buffer. Why don't we actually get within the rings? Seems fair. It'll certainly give us the best Oberth effect in order to make orbit. And some of the best shots of the surface of Saturn. Getting into orbit costs uh, less than 800 meters per second. I don't know if we have that though. I suppose I could calculate it, but I guess we'll leave it for as a matter of suspense. So let's add that maneuver. Okay, and let's time warp until we get the science. Okay. Temperature scan, gravity, hold on, let's get rid of that alarm clock. Okay, gravity scans 40 science. Let's transmit that. Temperature scans 48. Magnetometer scan is another 40. Okay, Geiger counter is 48. Not too sure. Aside from the interesting feature of Saturn's pole, that hexagon thing, don't know what other biomes one might identify for Saturn. Anyway, we'll probably find out more as we get closer. Okay, well, science has been retrieved. It is on its way to fulfill the Saturn flyby mission. We've already collected the experiment, so all it needs to do is fly by at that altitude and then it's done.
That's a big one to finish. Okay, well, let's uh, launch some missions now. Just a quick check on our station here. Uh, it's back down to 118 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. And it looks like our spaceport to our spaceport around the Earth is down to 252 days, so it'll need to be resupplied soon too, though that's obviously easier than this. Um, I've transferred all the food, water, and oxygen from these two pods into the station itself so we can deorbit them, but I'm not going to do that just now. I'm going to time warp the 64 days and get one of the Jupiter missions launched, and we've got two more of those. Then we've also got the resupply mission for this, and potentially we need to launch a resupply mission to the station around the Earth, so that, that'll all be next time, and also we will get uh, that mission at Saturn to its periapsis, so lots to do next time. But let's get one of the Jupiter missions off this time. Actually, before we time warp to the launch, I noticed that we did not have a technology queued up, so we have an interesting choice. We've got 409 data, uh, science points. We could unlock this nuclear power, but these are all non-RP0. Uh, though, uh, it is going to be all non-RP0 for the rest of this, because this is all advanced technology that hasn't been really sorted out by RP0, except for that one Nerva 2 there. Um, interesting, though, that one Nerva 2 is RP0 compatible, but only costs 75,000. I don't think that's the unlock cost. It's 2 million to unlock. Yeah, I was wondering because Nerva 1 costs 1.75 million to unlock. That's why we haven't used it yet. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll have to wait on that. Boy, it's going to be tough getting funds, I tell you, uh, to unlock these really expensive technologies. Let's not talk about the warp drive that's like uh, much more expensive even. Uh, we can't even see all the commas and stuff going on there. But anyway, that's a ways away. Um, yeah, well, more likely, we've got field science, which includes includes rover wheels, finally. Well, that'd be nice, but I don't know about the specific benefits of rovers. I mean, they're cute and all, but um, are they really worth 300 science when this particular particular uh, science does not offer more science. Uh, heavy command modules doesn't seem to have anything in it right now. I think those are probably near future spacecraft. We'll need to add that mod in. More importantly, we have these non-RP0 scanner modules, but they can scan for, and this is the general survey scanner, scan for specific resources, and then after that we can get this advanced science tech which gives us the ISRU units, though I'm not entirely sure this all works together properly. Um, that is still up in the air. But, I think this is the way we're going to go with the ISRU stuff. There's, there's a lot of possibilities, I mean like electronics, um, that has an anomaly scanner, that has some good science possibilities. But yeah, let's go with this. So that's being unlocked while we uh, time warp to the Jupiter transfer window. Okay, so here we have our rocket for the Jupiter communication satellite mission, well, Outer Planets communication satellite mission, and one of three. And so one will be around Jupiter and the others may be around other planets. We will see, it depends on whether we can get a good Jupiter slingshot to the other outer planets. And this is one way of testing that out. So, without further ado, ignition. Sixteen NK thirty threes and four NK forty threes. Lifting us up in. Uh oh. Uh. I think uh, there's been a Kraken strike. Yeah. I think it's pretty safe to say that this is a Kraken, right? This is, this is Kraken stuff. Yeah. There's been a lot of Kraken today, huh?
Well, what can you do? It is Kerbal Space Program after all. So I think, uh, okay, two, two Outer Planets communication missions. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, continue with this. Hold on, can we recover that particular? Not like this, I guess. Uh, are you not going to give me the little dialogue? Is this, does this even count as the game anymore? Or have you actually crashed? Hmm, anyway. So, there we go, okay. Catastrophic failure, no kidding. So yeah, next time, hopefully, things will turn out a little bit smoother. Though we got some stuff done this time. We supplied the moon port. We dealt with the Ganymede lander, made sure it had a proper course to Ganymede. We got our first mission in Saturn SOI, I believe. We Well, it definitely is our first mission in Saturn SOI because we got the high over Saturn data. And uh, yeah, we'll... We'll look into everything else next time. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.